All right, now we're back with Night Hacking from the Oridev conference, and we have a new speaker, Burr Sutter. So Burr, thanks a lot for joining. Mm -hmm. And could you briefly introduce yourself and what are you talking about at, uh, at this conference here? Okay, so my name is Burr, which I know is a very odd name, because that's question number one. Where did that name Burr come from? Um, we don't have time to go to this interview right, right Well, now, you can also ask your, your own question, like if you like, then okay. just <laughs> um, But that is my real name, Burr Sutter, and my primary responsibility is I work for Red Hat. I've been part of the Red Hat team for almost 13 years now, as part wow. of the JBoss acquisition that came into Red Hat many years ago. Uh, mostly I was in product management most of that time, but mm -hmm. these days I actually run, uh, I'm responsible for de developer relations, developer evangelism, developer advocacy, where we're out there talking to developers at Java conferences in particular, uh, talking about mostly the intersection of Java and Kubernetes. So mm -hmm. that's the world I live, at, I yeah. live in, right? How to do containerized Java-based applications running in a Kubernetes backbone. Right, what we also saw in your sessions. Right. Yep, so I had two sessions here uh, at this particular event. They wanted the uh, Istio session. Mm -hmm. uh, and one thing that was kind of unique about this event is the sessions are a little short, right? They're about 40 minutes. Yeah, right. So I you had to move kind of fast. Mm -hmm. You had to move kind of fast. And then, uh, and actually, you'll see in the recordings, if you watch them, that I'm, some of my demos really went sideways mm -hmm. on me because the networking here was definitely unusual. Uh, and that was true of both the hotel network, the conference network, mm -hmm. as well as my phone's network. I tried all three right. to make it work, and I got it limping along. Uh, but by default, if you're running a whole cloud on your laptop, then you need it to have a, a nice network connection yeah. in most cases. So the first session was on Istio, which is a service mesh technology that I'm super excited about. Been mm -hmm. looking at that now for over a year. Uh, and we've been very focused on that from a Red Hat standpoint, getting it ready for our yeah. customers to run it in production. And then also the second session was more serverless technology. Mm -hmm. And there I looked at OpenWhisk and talked about OpenWhisk briefly, but also a new, tech, uh, new project called Knative. And Knative is kind of burning up the airwaves right now. People mm -hmm. are super excited about Knative. So, uh, okay, just in a few sentences for folks who don't know Knative, uh, what's that about? So Knative is uh, specifically a set of primitives that give you serverless-like capabilities sitting on top of Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. uh, the easiest way to think of it, though, is the three major component parts of it. One is called serving, mm -hmm. and it allows you to basically define a service uh, as a pod, right? Mm -hmm. It basically launches a pod like anything else in Kubernetes right. land. But it's just, you can think of it as like a, a souped up deployment, a souped up pod. Basically, it's still your application running like a Spring Boot application, mm -hmm. Vertex application, Python, Node.js. It doesn't really matter. Right. Um, but what it does is it allows you to scale up from zero and back down to zero. So based on load coming in, it'll basically trigger the deployment. So you'll see it scale up from zero to one or zero to three, mm -hmm. like I show mm -hmm. in my demo. Uh, and then it's all based on load. And it will and hold the request for you while, while right. it is spinning up. It pauses mm -hmm. the request as, mm -hmm. it w as it waits for that spin up to happen. And then it processes the request, mm -hmm. gives a response back to the user. And then in my case, I set it up for the demo to basically run for 60 seconds before it scales back down. Okay. Uh, by default, out of the box at this moment, it's five minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, I just tweak it for 60 seconds because you don't really want to talk to your session's audience. session's not that long. Right. <laughs> You're going to be hanging out for a long time right. waiting for it to scale back down. And that's right. the interesting part is watching it go from one pod to mm -hmm. no pods. Uh, I also hit it with a lot of loads. So I see it burst and scale up to three. Mm -hmm. And then what's kind of cool about that is you see it go up to three rather rapidly based on a burst and load. But then based on a sustained load, you'll see it kind of trickle, uh, trickle back down to just one pod again. Okay. Uh, it has Even to if it doesn't need three, then we'll right. just see, okay, what's... And what's it's based on the concurrency load. of your application. Mm -hmm. So you can set the concurrency at the deployment level or at globally within Knative. I, uh, by default, it's 100, and that works fine for like a Tomcat, which is a 100 thread pool by default, mm -hmm. right, for Spring Boot type right. Tomcat app. Um, but I set mine to 10 just to make it scale sure. faster, right? Uh, so that's a pretty cool technology. The other two aspects of uh, Knative are build and eventing, right? Mm -hmm. So you have serving, which is the component I just talked about. The build component is how do you build an image and get the get your source code ready to deploy. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people refer to that as source to URL. Yeah. You know, basically getting that service stood up. Uh, you can manually build it as a Docker image. You can manually build it as a Maven package. Uh, but now they're working on these build uh, constructs. So you basically can do the Maven build, do the Docker build, deploy it, all kind of an automated way inside uh, Knative on top of Kubernetes. So it takes responsibility away from your CD pipeline, I guess? Well, no, you can, integrate it, you can integrate it fully with a pipeline mm -hmm. uh, you, as your build strategy. Like we've even mapped it to the what's called the source to image pipeline mm -hmm. within OpenShift itself. So basically, we've always had this capability in a platform as a service like function right. where to take your s raw sources and convert right. those raw sources into something that executes. So if it's a Maven project, it looks for a POM XML builds it as a fat jar or mm -hmm. war, depending on the type of deployment yeah, you have, yeah. uh, and then running that with the Docker build and then putting it into a Kubernetes backbone. Uh, same thing with Python, though, Node.js. Right, we introspect right. the, the source repository. Mm -hmm. 
So that's called source to image. So we've actually added our source to image logic to this Knative build capability, right? So a Knative build can trigger our S2I, okay. it can trigger Maven, it can trigger you know, Gradle. And it can you have to do less as right. a developer. You don't and have to set up more in your CI server. That's well, already been. Yeah, the ultimate goal is so the developer doesn't they probably a developer will probably still do a local Maven mm -hmm. build if you're a Java person, right. or NPM if you're a Node, or you know, you know, whatever it means to just test your code. But what you don't want is to have to build a Docker image yourself. That's that's where we've been working now for several years mm -hmm. to get to the point where the, mm -hmm. the developer doesn't have to worry about a Docker image. Right. Uh, and so that's really the power I see in build and all the inf uh, all the innovation we see in that space. Mm -hmm. uh, the third major pillar of Knative that was eventing, uh, the event stream input. By default, on the serving side, it mm -hmm. responds to HTTP events out of the box, right? So HTTP load, boom, scales up. Right. Uh, but what we want to do on the eventing side is basically make it so you can bring any kind of event stream in, mm -hmm. any kind of event source, whether it be AMQP uh, is a good example where messages, uh, maybe you want something like FTP or MQTT or you know files showing up in a file system. Mm -hmm. And that's based on cloud events. And you can look up cloud events IO mm -hmm. as an example. Uh, but that's they've already done interoperability testing to show like an, a file showing up in S3 on Amazon can actually trigger a function in Azure, oh. as an example. Yeah. So this is kind of uh, that same work but bringing it on to your Kubernetes cluster mm -hmm. where you have event streams that can trigger the services which yeah, were built and built, right? You right? could so do a lot of things by just integrating these. Uh, yeah, so, mm -hmm. so it's still fairly immature. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we see that it's a brand new open source project. It's right. open sourced in July of 2018 oh. by the Google team and the Pivotal team and, mm -hmm. and Red Hat and others, you know, basically said we partner with this also. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're just going to have to let it mature as we work right. our way through this process. Yeah, so it's pretty it's pretty exciting technology. Just to watch it run is pretty cool, right? Yeah. You know, burst and scale up and scale Absolutely. back down. Yeah, adding a lot of very helpful needed functionality. Say. Well, a lot of people have asked too about the autoscaler aspects of uh, Kubernetes, and Kubernetes has built-in autoscalers right. for like CPU and memory. This is event stream autoscaling, yeah. right? And it's not you're not running out of memory or CPU necessarily. You're basically just running out of ability to absorb mm -hmm. input, mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it scales up based on that HTTP input or other event input. Which makes more sense from an API user's perspective. Right. So. That's that's definitely interesting. Um, so now, in terms of the Oridev conference, wh mm -hmm. uh, while we're here, so what was your um, motivation to speak specifically at this conference and um, to share all that knowledge on on the server server side technology? Yeah. Well, one thing I saw about Oridev, uh, I've seen their videos before on mm -hmm. YouTube. They've had some high quality speakers here. They put on some high quality uh, content. Uh, and, and therefore, I knew it was a quality conference. Mm -hmm. and, and so I definitely noticed that. And I've seen that borne out here. Yep. Right? They, they definitely run a great show here. I'm a big fan of any kind of what I call a community conference, mm -hmm. where it's really the local community is rallied around right. to, to produce an event like that. I worked really hard many years ago to create a conference out of Atlanta mm -hmm. called DevNexus, which was part of the Atlanta Java user group for many years. And we wanted to have our own event in the city that basically pulled in all the developers from the local region. Uh, and now it's a you know world-class conference yes. running out of Atlanta right now. So I'm a, just a big fan of local community, local Java user group, local meetups, local conferences, uh, and watching the community rally around itself, if mm -hmm. you will, to actually produce the quality of content and experience, get everyone together for just a day or two or three, whatever it is. Uh, you know, even a one-day event is still awesome and a great place to start. And it just kind of rallies the local, the local mm -hmm. engineers to kind of get together and have a chat. Uh, and what's really interesting to me is if you put on a daytime conference, uh, you'll get a different group of people than you if you put on a nighttime event. So oh, yes. I, and I saw that at yeah. the Java user group for many years. That's true. You have your people who are good at coming out at night, mm -hmm. and maybe they're the senior people or they're the architects who are got to be billable, mm -hmm. or they're consultants that have to be billable during the day. Right. Uh, while during the day, you get the people um, who won't or otherwise come out at night, mm -hmm. right? They have things to do at night, right. uh, but their boss let them go, so they show up for the daytime and they come learn new things about new technologies. That's an interesting perspective. Yeah, yeah and so I'm, I'm a believer that all our communities around the globe need to have for both night, weekend, and day, mm -hmm. like all three options. Right. <laughs> yeah, that makes a lot of sense, yeah, if you think about it. Right, yeah, I think that's a good motivation to maybe uh, join uh, Oridef and... Um, join next year if you uh, uh, want to. So is there anything um, else you would like to share, especially for folks uh, who have not been at this conference maybe? The, the one thing, uh, for the people who are watching this video, they actually mm -hmm. fall in a certain category. And I mentioned this in my um, last session. Uh, and I like using these numbers, though they're kind of large, right? Mm -hmm. So there's 7 billion people on this planet. Right. They all need digital assets. They all need digital APIs, apps, creations, you know, user interfaces, whatever it might be. Everybody's right. doing more and more and more. Right. And there's so few developers 
on the planet. There's only about 10 million professional software developers, and there's so few people that are out there uh, really gaining new education, showing up for the conference, yes. right? While there's 1,300 people or more here, right? There's so few of us that actually show up for a conference, mm -hmm. show up for a meetup, show up for a Java user group or .NET user group or you know JavaScript user group. It doesn't matter what it is. Very few people get a chance to do that. Uh, and just like there's very few people who will even watch this video. So already these people are incredibly elite. And mm -hmm. so I think that's uh, something that must be constantly mm -hmm. encouraged mm -hmm. for the good of the whole industry, yeah. you know, for everybody. I fully agree. Well, I would say that's a very nice uh, cl uh, closing <laughs> closing words. And so, yeah, bro, thanks a lot for joining us. And for everybody watching, well, thanks for watching. Bye. Thank you.